Hey everyone, Arizu Gaming here, and I just wanted to talk about all the different starting options you have in Oxygen Not Included, spaced out, uh, for picking different asteroid clusters and just the meaningful choices that you can make when starting a new colony. Because I know I like to start new colonies a lot. The early game in Oxygen Not Included is really fun, the strive to survive, and uh, there's so many different options that really all are different from each other. There's information on the wiki about a lot of the stuff in the base game, but the information that's currently out about the DLC is somewhat patchy and outdated. So I just wanted to do a quick video where I run through my thoughts from all the different starts, some things to watch out for, um, things that I like and are interesting about all the different starting options. So let's begin. So there's two different sort of styles that you can go for. There's the classic style, which is a lot more like the base game, where you have one large asteroid with most of the biomes on it, and you're encouraged to build a big base, uh, lots of dupes, build transit tubes everywhere, connect to all the different areas of the asteroid, hook up all the different geysers. Uh, there's usually like 10 to 20 geysers on the main asteroid. You can get a wide variety of geysers, and it's mostly focused on the main asteroid. In Spaced Out, there is a teleporter that can spawn, if you allow it to spawn, uh, which will let you teleport to a smaller asteroid, which will have some slightly different biomes that you won't find on your main on your main asteroid, including usually a pretty big radioactive biome. But uh, yeah, the main emphasis is on the main asteroid. You can teleport over to the small asteroid, and then there are also outer asteroids that have uh, unique destinations on it, like the, the Temporal Tear Opener, the, the Resin Tree, the Gassy Moose, and they're all much further out on the star map. So you only need rocket travel to go to these outer asteroids. Yeah, and you pretty much can explore most of the game just on your starting position. Uh, whereas in Spaced Out, uh, you can have between three and five smaller inner asteroids, and I've tried to scale the images so that they're at the same relative size. Um, and you have about the same amount of space combined between your main and smaller asteroid in the classic start, uh, compared to all five moonlets on, say, the moonlet cluster start. And the there are a middle there is a middle ground option where you can have a slightly smaller main asteroid and then two smaller asteroids with a teleporter going to one of them. And in all of these cases, the emphasis on Spaced Out is having smaller bases, uh, encouraging more rocket travel, sometimes making rocket travel required to get access to crucial resources and biomes. And it's a much more sort of spread out game where your dupes are spread out across the star map a bit more. Uh, so yeah, those are the two sort of different options really. It, it kind of feels like three options. The middle Spaced Out option does really feel like classic light and there are some interesting things that come of that, uh, which I'll explain more as I get further into the discussion. So I'm going to talk about the classic style asteroids first, and then I'll talk about the spaced out style clusters, and then I'll conclude with my big summary tables that are kind of based off the tables in the wiki, but uh, I've adjusted them slightly. So yeah, let's begin. So the classic asteroid. Let's move me over here. So this asteroid. Uh, it's fairly standard. There aren't world traits, so you won't have like a uh, random frozen core or large glaciers everywhere. Uh, you just start off with your sandstone biome in the middle. It's a large sandstone biome full of sandstone, algae that you can turn into oxygen via oxygen diffusers, hatches that you can feed stuff to produce coal uh, for power. Pretty, pretty easy starting biome, pretty comfortable. And then you have access to most of the other biomes on this initial Terra asteroid. You can find the ocean biome for poke shells and large quantities of sand. You can find the marsh biome for thimble reeds and slime and <laughs> slime lung. Yay. Um, wasteland biome, which is fairly new, uh, is where you can find sweetles and grub grubs and sulfur deposits. Uh, you've got the tundra biomes, which are cold and full of wheeze warts and sleep wheats. Great place to dump all of your waste heat in the early game, if you're uh, struggling with that. The jungle biomes, where you find the Drecos and the Pitch Pepper Nuts and all that sort of stuff. Um, Drecos are very important for reed fiber. Thimble, uh, thimble reeds are also very important for reed fiber. These are what you need to make exosuits so that your dupes breathe outside of 
the uh, oxygen atmosphere. You're going to want them at some point, and you're either going to be getting them from a marsh biome, thimble reeds, or a jungle biome, dracos. This will be more important later. And then at the bottom of the asteroid, you have a big oily biome, which is which is quite hot. It will scold your dupes if they try and get in without pouring something cool in first. I would recommend dumping in some cool salt water or polluted water, just so your dupes can wander around in it. And then if you oxygenate the area as well, it'll be cold enough for them to be able to get in, grab the refined lead, grab the fossil, grab the oil and get out without needing suits. And then immediately below that, you have the magma biome, where it's extremely hot and <laughs> it's, it's a great heat source uh, for running geothermal power. And you might find volcanoes in there. I don't think you usually find volcanoes in there. I think you usually find volcanoes elsewhere on the map. But you might find one or two. But uh, yes, you will teleport over to the radioactive swamp. Um, the smaller asteroids are different from the main asteroids on these classic starts in a few ways. One is that they lack a space biome. In the space that DLC, the space biome, instead of being pounded by meteors regularly, is cold. And there are occasional meteor showers, but that's, that's a feature that's currently being worked on, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, but yeah, it's very cold. You can dump heat there again. You can go mine cold space rocks and cold regolith and fill a room full of them to make a freezer. Like, just get your dupes to deliver cold rock to the room. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty quick solution to cooling a room down to start the game. Worth considering. On the smaller asteroids, there won't be a space biome. Uh, so if you're landing a rocket on it, it's very easy to tunnel through. There's no abyssalite layer. Um, but bear that in mind as well, that the top of the smaller asteroids isn't particularly well insulated you can breach into the vacuum of space fairly easily, so just be prepared for that. Don't, um, don't let all your gases escape when you're mining around here. Um, on the Terra Star, you'll teleport into a swampy biome, so there will be lots of polluted water and polluted dirt off-gassing, so you won't have to worry about oxygen production to start, but you will want to clean it with deodorizers. Um, polluted oxygen triggers the yucky lungs debuff, which makes your dupes consume 30% more oxygen, so you will want to clean that, and you will eventually probably want to set up some sublimation stations for that, but I'll talk more about this on the on the squelchy asteroid start, where that's the main feature. But yeah, overall, um, pretty easy to get oxygen. You start with a lot of water on both of these, start, uh, both of these asteroids. Um, fairly straightforward, good for learning the game. Um, the lack of world traits means it's a very consistent experience across multiple different maps. Uh, so it's very good for sort of like testing out uh, new strategies where you don't really want a challenging map. You just want an environment where you can just get to work with like a typical game experience. So it's pretty nice. One thing I will point out here, which will be relevant later on as well, is you will always find a single hatch buried uh, in the in the ground immediately to the left of your printing pod and this is the case for pretty much every map except for the ones where you start in a swampy biome so even on maps that don't normally have hatches immediately available you will find one hatch to the left of your printing pod so you have a lot of options for breeding them and, and getting the coal out of them as a result and being able to power your base and getting the food from them so I'll, I'll talk about this more later. Yeah, moving on to the Oceana asteroid. Uh, this is very similar to the Terra asteroid, but it has a massive swathe of ocean biome in it, randomly generated. And these ocean biomes, unlike the ones that spawn on the normal Terra asteroid, are absolutely full of salt water. So it's going to be difficult to move around. Your dupes move slower in salt water. It irritates their eyes, so they move slower because of the irritated eyes. Um, you do want to have a plan for digging around it. A, so that your dupes can move around the map, and B, so that you don't pour salt water on your base. Because <laughs> that can be very annoying, flooding all of your buildings. Um, so the salt water is about 30 degrees C. Unlike the salt water that comes out of salt, uh, salt water geysers, it takes a lot of energy to boil it. And if you're running it through desalinators, that's going to be a constant power draw you'll need to make up somewhere else like with coal generators or so solar panels, so you will need to think about how you're going to deal with all that salt water. You can feed it to water weeds for food, 
but the water weeds also require um, bleach stone for fertilization. And while there is bleach stone in these biomes, you will run out of it fairly quickly unless you start ranching squeaky puffs or mining it in space. Um, so what I like to do on these maps is pour all the salt water <laughs> on the magma biome because then you can cool down the magma biome and turn it into hot igneous rock that you can transport around and dig through a bit more easily. And then you turn all the salt water into steam, which you can condense back into regular water and feed to your electrolyzers or your oil wells, etc. And then all the salt just evaporates out of it and you can rock brush that salt into sand, table salt, and never run out of sand. So it is quite a powerful start. You just need to have a strategy for handling all the salt water. And the salt water also comes with lots of poke shells. Uh, these are critters that eat a lot of polluted dirt, and rock piles, and their, their sort of molts when they die can produce a fair amount of lime from the rock pressure. I don't normally recommend ranching them, uh, but they're a pretty interesting feature, partly because they get aggressive around their eggs. So if your dupes are wandering through an area where a poke shell has laid an egg, uh, they can get attacked by the poke shell, which can cause them to flee and stop their current errand. So you'll want a strategy for that as well. Um, I would suggest just finding poke shell eggs and <laughs> sticking them in a room with an automated dispenser. Just get your dupes to deliver them automatically and eventually get all the poke shells on the map appearing in that one room. Uh, you don't need to ranch them, but just move all the eggs over there slowly so you don't accidentally stumble across angry poke shells. And then you can decide what to do with them later. But yeah, you do start as well uh, on the Oceana asteroid, you start in a sandstone biome again. So you've got the hatches, you've got lots of water, you've got algae to generate oxygen with. You also have swampy biomes on this asteroid, uh, directly next to your sandstone biomes often. So you can get lots of polluted water from that, you can get lots of polluted oxygen off-gassing from that polluted water, from the polluted dirt. So oxygen is, qu oxygen is quite straightforward. You've got, you've got a few different options. Again, you'll have access to the marsh and the jungle biome for your thimble reed, uh, uh, for your for your thimble reed and your drecos respectively, reed fiber. So, pretty good access to the late game sort of industrial resources. Yeah, I, I like it quite a bit. And then you teleport over to the glowwood wasteland. You teleport into a forest biome to start. Forest biomes are a little bit more tricky to generate oxygen on because they lack algae or polluted water, or polluted dirt. Uh, you will need to use the oxyferns to process the water into oxygen. And the oxyferns are pretty good, but they're they're limited in number, and you do need to submerge them in carbon dioxide. So definitely position the oxyferns at the bottom of the base uh, when you can, so that the CO2 your dupes breathe out falls down there. Um, so just make use of the oxyferns. Plant, plant them and feed them the water while they don't generate enough oxygen to be useful. Um, and just bear that in mind when you teleport over to this asteroid that you'll need to use the oxyferns to get oxygen. Because you won't find sandstone or swampy biomes over there. But you will again find this big radioactive biome, so uh, have fun with that. So then after that we have the Swelchy asteroid start, which is where you start in a swampy biome. Now. You won't find a hatch uh, immediately to the left of your printing pod in this start because it's a swampy biome. But there are sandstone biomes on the map, so you can still wander around and usually find hatches fairly close to your starting area uh, if you want them. Uh, as I said before, uh, the swampy biome is full of polluted dirt and polluted water. You, you can actually run a colony of like 12 dupes off of the off-gassing from the polluted water and the polluted dirt. Use sublimation stations to speed up the off-gassing for the polluted dirt into polluted oxygen. And then for the polluted water, what you can do is you can spread it out over a, a very wide area and, the, and keep the gas at a low pressure. And then the, get, then the water will off-gas a lot. And you can, you can use that quite efficiently. So, uh, yeah. Interesting start. You do have to clean the oxygen to avoid the yucky lungs debuff. So make sure to get deodorizers, make sure to go into sandstone biomes to get all the uh, all the space biome to get filtration medium for those deodorizers. Either sand or regolith will do. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. You'll find lots of tundra biomes as well. 
Uh, so lots of places for you to dump your heat into. Uh, again, you will find marsh and jungle biomes, so you'll have access to all of those resources. Your radioactive forest uh, has the extensive forest biome, so that's where you'll find your pips and your arbor acorns for sustainable dirt production. Um, and yeah, you'll find the oceans over there as well if you need if you need salt water and, and sand and that sort of stuff. Pretty interesting start. One feature about the swampy biomes is you will find plug slugs. And plug slugs are very good in the early game because they generate you free power. <laughs> they eat metal ore and you'll find a lot of cobalt ore in the in the swampy biomes. And they'll eat the cobalt ore and turn it into hydrogen. Um, and when they sleep, they will sleep on a wire that's two tiles down from the ceiling and they'll generate a lot of power at night while they're asleep. Um, so build a couple of batteries, you can harvest this power means you don't have to have your dupes running on wheels for very long. Just just build a room around the plug slugs that you can find, Le uh, ranch them, wrangle them into a or wrangle them into a room, and then just keep them in there and feed the metal ore. Uh, they have gotten quite a lot better since the the space that DLC came out. In that you can feed them refined metal now. Uh, so you you can what you can do is if you've got a lot of metal volcanoes on your asteroid, you can feed them the refined metal. Um, sustainably and then get hydrogen sustainably from that it's not a lot of hydrogen but you can get them producing the, the max power because they're they're satiated so that could be an interesting strategy ranching plug slugs with power and meat and hydrogen and stuff but yeah more of a more of an early game thing i'd say but um they're they're very welcome <laughs> they, they do make things easier earlier on definitely take advantage of them um one thing to point out about these tables, I've just marked the starting biome uh, as S and the biome you teleport into as T, uh, just for your reference. This will be more uh, obvious on the larger tables at the end of the video. So moving on to the Rhyme asteroid. So this asteroid is different from a lot of the other main asteroids in that all of the biome variants are colder than usual. Well, most of the biome variants are colder than usual. The magma isn't colder than usual. But everything else is very cold. Uh, you'll start in a sandstone biome and you will have immediate access to hatches. But aside from this sort of little hexagon around your printing pod, the rest of the map is too cold to grow mealwoods in. So you will need to heat up areas of the map to grow plants in. This is not that big of a problem, but you do need to consider it. You can run out of food if you're not careful. Um, so what I would say is if you're going to farm, Set up heat sources early on that can heat your farms. A liquid tepidizer is a good choice. Um, very power efficient, generates a large amount of heat. You can automate it and have it run only some of the time to get a target temperature you want. And it's a very efficient way of converting power into heat. I wouldn't recommend space heaters. They, they aren't as efficient. If you're trying to heat a very small area, they can work, but they, they require a lot of power for the amount of heat they give you. Kilns are a good heat source. If you have a lot of uh, clay, say from deodorizers that are running, or um, uh, or if you're trying to make refined carbon, then kilns can generate a lot of heat. But obviously this depends on you having a lot of coal and potentially a lot of clay. So situational, but doesn't cost power and generates a good amount of heat. Worth, worth noting. Metal refineries are another pretty good way of generating heat. The coolant pipes will be, will have very hot liquids in them. And you can just run these through the cold biomes to cool them down and heat up the biomes. Uh, so, yeah, a few different options for heating up areas. My other piece of advice would be to ranch critters, because critters are generally more cold, uh, cold uh, resistant than plants are. Now, one caveat to this is, aside from the hatches, a lot of the biomes that spawn with these cold variants, uh, they'll be frozen over, the plants won't be spawned, you'll be able to find seeds, but not the plants themselves won't be alive and you'll often find the biomes without the critters it could be quite a hassle to actually find dracos on a rhyme map because the the jungle biomes will be too cold for them so you may have to teleport over to your stinko swamp to find dracos on that asteroid where the where the jungle biomes are hot hot like normal uh, but you can still find uh, thimble reeds the marsh biomes on rhyme asteroids are very convenient because because they're cold, the slime lung germs that normally exist and make digging through slime marsh biomes really annoying and awkward, 
um, those germs die off in the cold immediately. So you can just excavate the full marsh biomes without issues. Grab your thimble reeds, heat them up, um, as I described earlier, and then just take advantage of that for your reed fiber. Uh, you won't find swampy biomes. Um, you won't find biomes full of liquids in general. Uh, you'll find lots of like sort of frozen ice in the ocean biomes. You'll often find brine ice um, instead of salt water in the... I mean, obviously you'll find ice in the tundra biomes. There are a couple of tundra biomes on the Rime asteroid, but but it's mostly just cold overall. You're not going to find too many tundra biomes. The oil biomes are also cold. You'll often find the crude oil frozen, so you'll you'll need to heat that up or, or dig it out and transfer it as a liquefiable. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. You, you The water around your printing pod is warm enough to not freeze. But you might get unlucky, and one of your initial bodies of water might be frozen. So you may need to heat that up as well. And, yeah. One thing I would say as well is points of interest on the map that generate, like, specific geyser formations, like this cool steam vent here, or this puzzle in the oil biome, or this puzzle in the oil biome, or this natural gas vent, or the teleporter. All of these like fixed formations will generate in the normal temperature so they will be hotter than the rest of the map and they may provide a bit of a refuge if needed if you find one of these close by it could be another spot where you could farm some stuff without having to heat it up first so do consider that and uh yeah it's a pretty interesting start i like it a lot um usually you have the problem of generating too much heat in your base until you find a way to manage that properly and on this asteroid because the whole asteroid is so cold you can put off that problem for way longer you can just let metal volcanoes erupt into the environment and not really worry about it as much just because you've got so much like provided you have some kind of conductive gas in the area that will transfer the heat away into the into the frozen solids like you'll be you'll be in a good position to dissipate all that heat uh, which is really nice. But yeah, moving on from this, we have the Vedante asteroid. So this is the first forest star um, for your main asteroid. So you do need to use the oxy ferns to convert the water into oxygen. And they do require carbon dioxide to work. So you'll want to plant the oxy ferns at the bottom of your base. And then have your, have your water nearby. All the carbon dioxide that your dupes breathe, your coal generators produce, etc. will head down there. Plants can suck it up, produce the oxygen, the oxygen can rise throughout your base. Works pretty well. The oxyfern seeds you find will be limited. Um, on this start, you will find a lot of oxyfern seeds, but it's not going to be enough to handle like 30 dupes. You will eventually need to start electrolyzing water. Um, you, will, you will find more oxyferns in the printing pod, but you can't always rely on that. So just bear that in mind. You do start with pips and arboracorns as well. Uh, if you want to consume polluted water out of the swampy and marsh biomes that surround you, um, feeding it to trees and then feeding pips to trees can be a pretty good way of getting food and getting dirt, which is nice. You do start with a hatch to the left of your printing pod. Even though it's not a sandstone biome, you will find one there. So you can branch hatches provided that initial hatch doesn't um kick the bucket so keep that initial hatch safe and then what you can do is you can feed them the dirt the abundant dirt that you find in the forest biome and get sage hatches going and sage hatches uh, only consume organic materials but they produce a lot more coal they produce it more efficiently than the other ha than the other hatches so yeah bear that in mind Sage hatches and pips are both pretty good options. You can have the ranches in a ratio with each other where the pips generate enough dirt to feed the sage hatches. And that's a pretty powerful combo. Especially if you have a polluted water vent or something. Um, so one other thing to bear in mind with the Vedante asteroid is um, the biomes spawn at normal temperatures, but the oil biome will be spread out irregularly across the map. Like you can see here, these sort of red pockets where it's much hotter. These are the oil biomes. 
um, instead of forming a layer by the magma biome, you can just find them randomly. Um, so there's two things from this. Firstly, you could start very close to an oil biome. Um, you could dig out of your starting biome and immediately come across one, and it will still scold your dupes. It will still be quite hot, but if you find a way to transfer heat from the outside biomes inwards, you can cool them down enough that your dupes can run in, grab the lead, fossil, etc., and run out. Um, and what I would recommend is literally just pouring a liter of water on them from the from the swampy, from the marsh biomes, etc. Yeah, like it's fine. <laughs> and then and then it'll be cold enough for your dupes to wade in and uh, deal with it. And then you can filter out all the oil. Uh, yeah, very powerful having access to early refined metal like that um, because of the lead. Uh, it will let you industrialize a lot quicker if you can pull it off. And the other thing to bear in mind is that the irregular oil that is innate to Vedante stacks with the irregular oil world trait um, and the trapped oil world traits. You can combine these to get an insane amount of oil wells. You can find like 30, 40 oil wells on some Vedante maps as a result. So you can run a very oil-based playthrough with that, where you're gen where you're just generating tons and tons of oil, uh, which is very which could be very challenging but very cool. Uh, so I'd highly recommend that um, as an interesting option. Uh, but yes, you won't find any tundra biomes on the Vedante um, start, so you will need to teleport over to the radioactive Terra asteroid to find them, and they will be underneath the radioactive biome. So getting wheeze warts for initial radiation research can be a bit challenging. And uh, yeah, likewise, you'll find sweetles and grub grubs and hatches on the other asteroid. Um, if you don't ranch your initial hatch next to the printing pod, you can find more on the radioactive Terra asteroid. So that can be that could be OK. Um, but yeah, so generally the classic style maps fall into two sort of categories. Similar to Terra and similar to Vedante, with the Squelchy being like the rare exception. Um, and as a result, most of the uh, more advanced classic variants have either the radioactive Terra or the um, or the radioactive Swamp uh, smaller asteroids. And that's all these colors correspond to. These colors correspond to which um, smaller asteroid you're going to get with your main asteroid. And this will all make sense at the end of the video. So I put a little eye here for the oil biome, just to show that it's regular. And yeah, Arborea is very similar to Vedante, but there's a few subtle changes. So the oil biome isn't irregular, so it's on the bottom of the map, which is more challenging. Um, there's no marsh biome. There's no marsh biome on either the Arborea or the radioactive Terra asteroid, which means you'll lack thimble reeds until you can get into space with rockets uh, instead of the teleporter. Um, and thus you won't be able to make reed fiber from thimble reeds. You will need to ranch Dracos to make exosuits. You, you, you can do rocket travel without exosuits, but it's <laughs> it can be quite annoying. Um, so I would say um, prioritize Dracos if you can. You can find jungle biomes on both the Arborea and the smaller asteroid. The biomes are at regular temperatures, so it's, it's, not, too, it's not too bad. But you will find lots of tundra biomes on the Arborea map. So you will have access to the Wheeze Warts. It, it generally has a bit more of a colder feel to it, but the biomes themselves will be normal. They won't be like the Rhyme variants. But uh, yeah, overall quite similar to the Dante. Um, <laughs> I just have the pips on the wheels here because I thought it was cute. There's a Steam Workshop mod for um, squirrel wheels. This is not a feature of the map. I just thought it was cute. Yeah, moving on. Volcania. So this is similar to the Terra start, but you have magma channels appearing innately at random positions on the map. This can include near space. So this is a typical sort of um, Volcania map. You have the normal magma biome down here with the wide obsidian formations, and then you have the magma channels with the sort of more sort of like giraffe skin pattern going on here. And they could appear anywhere. They could appear close to your starting biome, they could appear close to space. They could they could appear all over the place. Um, but there's a few interesting things to note. So first of all, this can stack with the magma channels um, and volcanoes world traits, 
to end up with even more magma all over your asteroid and even more volcanoes. Uh, so you can have a lot of fun beating, uh, beating uh, stone hatches off the igneous rock or running massive boilers off all those volcanoes. Uh, yeah, it can be a lot of fun. It can be challenging. The abyssalite that constrains these magma channels will occasionally have leaks in it. So you can find that the heat from a magma channel will be enough to cook a nearby biome. Like if you have a if you have it connecting to a tundra biome, the tundra biome might just melt. Like all the ice might melt. It might even turn to steam. Um, like a, a marsh biome, like the slime might cook into dirt um, or even sand. The depleted water might evaporate away. Uh, you can have some really interesting things happen. And sometimes these interesting things can happen really near to your starting biome. So you need to be really vigilant for any heat leaks. And when you discover them, be decisive. Decide to either patch it up or insulate your base and take advantage of the chaos. I usually patch them up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it can be a lot of fun. Um, interesting quirk about magma channels, which isn't directly related to the start, so I thought I'd bring up now anyways. Um, the magma channels that are innate to Volcania uh, change how the oil biome generates as well. So you'll still get a full oil biome on Volcania. It will just be slightly more irregular. It will just be bending around the magma channels. Uh, but if you're playing a regular start, like, uh, like um, I don't know, like Oceania or, or something like that, um, and you pick magma channels, the magma channels can actually overwrite the oil biome. It is possible to have a map without an oil biome and thus without any oil sources until you get into space uh, if you pick magma channels. So that could be a really interesting cha challenge as well. I'll talk more about world traits in another video, but I just thought I'd bring that up while we're here because, because Volcania works differently to the normal magma channels trait. You will always have an oil biome. You're not going to miss out on it. You're not going to have less oil wells usually. Um, something else to bring up is that the obsidian in the magma channels is actually colder than the obsidian you'll find in the main magma biome. It will typically be around sort of 200 to 400 degrees C compared to the 1500-ish degrees C of the, the main magma biome. And what this often means is that over time, the magma in the magma channels will, will solidify into igneous rock. Um, so that can make it a bit easier to handle. Uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, pretty interesting start. And you just teleport over to the radioactive swamp asteroid like for most Terra variants. Uh, the Badlands asteroid. This is a really interesting asteroid in that <laughs> most of the biomes are replaced with just these deposits of rock and obsidian. Um, it can be challenging to find water sources to get your oxygen production started off because you'll have to dig through vast swathes of the map to find a jungle biome or a wasteland biome or anything like that that might have oil in it uh, or water <laughs> um, or oil in it. You might have to dig away to find oil. Uh, the the Badlands uh, barren biome will generate over the magma, magma biome and the oil biome occasionally. So you can have less oil than usual. Uh, so bear that in mind. Um, it can be challenging, but there is a big boon to the barren biome. It is full of veins of refined iron tiles. Uh, so it's not just lead that melts really easily and, is, and has a low overheat temperature. It's iron, which you use for making steel. It has a really good overheat temperature. And these tiles have a lot of mass. And, they could, and you'll find them right next to your starting sandstone biome. Uh, so definitely prioritize grabbing a chunk of iron as soon as possible and then you can just industrialize really quickly you can get conductive wires right away um you can get steel production going right away because you'll have plenty of iron to use for it um you'll have plenty of hatches as well you won't find too many hatches in the badlands uh, barren biomes but you will have your guaranteed hatch next to the printing pod you'll have some other hatches in the sandstone biome um and uh, if you get them all the way up to stone hatches, you can feed them any igneous rock you can find. And there's, to be honest, there's a lot of granite in this biome biome, so you can feed that to hatches anyways. Hatches are very strong on this on this start, I would say. Um, yes, uh, the other biomes are quite limited. You won't find a marsh biome 
here so you won't have access to temple read you will you will need dracos to get the um get the read fiber unless you manage to find the teleporter and get over to your radioactive swamp um bear that in mind you won't have access to the gold amalgam from the, the marsh biome either until you teleport over but that's not really a problem because if you want to build something with a high overheat temperature it's quite easy to make steel with all of this iron hanging around that's like the main thing i want to emphasize about badlands grab that iron it's really good um the other thing to note is there's no ocean biomes on either asteroid so very very unlikely you're gonna find poke shells you have to travel into space to find find um stuff associated with ocean biomes so be careful in that regard uh so then we have iridio iridio is an interesting uh forest start area um in that the whole map is warmer than comfortable <laughs> Aside from the area immediately surrounding your printing pod, um, all the biomes are above 30 degrees C. Well, most of the biomes. Um, all of your normal biomes are above 30 degrees C, so you can't grow mealwoods in them. And running out of food at the start, as a result, can be really easy. Um, so there's a few different things I recommend for this. First of all, even though there's no sandstone biomes, you will find your starting hatch next to your printing pod. You can use this to ranch hatches. Get meat from the hatches, get coal. It 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 works. Um, trees. Trees grow trees can grow a little hotter than mealwoods. So if you have a polluted water source, you can feed trees that, and then you can feed the trees to pips. That's a pretty good way of generating food as well. Uh, you do have access to marsh biomes, they are hot, but uh, you will still have access to pakus in them. Breeding pakus for food can be quite good. Uh, it takes a bit of finesse at the start, making sure that you can actually tame your first paku. Uh, my advice is to feed them a very small quantity of algae um, fed to a fish feeder with an auto sweeper. Then the fish will constantly be eating from the feeder because it's always hungry because it's not getting enough food. And thus will always be getting the eight from feeder bonus that makes it tame over time. And once it's tamed, they reproduce really quickly. You can switch over to feeding them seeds because we don't have to worry about retaming them. And the seeds will keep them the seeds will keep them hungry very efficiently. Provided you're growing some other plants of some kind. But yeah, Pakus are really good for food. And they can they can thrive in warm temperatures as well. Uh, there are wasteland biomes around you, and you can find grub fruits in them. Uh, grub fruits require sulfur, but they do grow up to 50 degrees C. So if you want to farm something, grub fruits are pretty strong. Uh, you can feed the you can feed the sulfur to sweetles and grub grubs as well. Branching them can be pretty effective because it lets you effectively turn the sulfur into sucrose by feeding it to the sweetles. And then the grub grubs turn the sucrose into mud, which you can turn into dirt and water. And this is really powerful, and I'll talk more about this later because it's quite relevant to when the moonlit starts. But uh, yeah, sweetles and grub grubs. Critter ranching in general is just very good. Grub fruits are a good plant to grow. Um, Something I like to do with this as well, you will find jungles quite close to you with the Dracos. Uh, setting up a room with Dracos and Balm Lilies can be quite good. Ranching Dracos for food isn't a terrible option. They they produce a lot of food. And if you can get a room full of chlorine, Balm Lilies grow in hot temperatures and don't require any inputs to grow. They just need to be surrounded by chlorine. So feed them to the Dracos and then eat the Dracos and then get your reed fiber, get your plastic... Uh, once you can cool down a room for a meal wood, meal wood farm or the glossy dracos it could work but uh yeah something else to bear in mind the space biome is not hotter than usual so you can collect space rocks and dump them in rooms to cool them and the radioactive biomes which spawn on this map because of the spaced out update are not cold are not warmer than usual uh so they are cold you can, you can devastate them to cool your base if you want. Um, they don't tend to have a huge amount of high mass tiles, so the effect will be limited, but it is an option. And also, again, points of interest will spawn at their usual temperatures. The teleporter will always spawn at like a comfortable temperature. So you can sort of rip it apart and plant plants in there for a little bit, provided you insulate it. Um, it's an option. But yeah, heat management is important. You're going to want to prioritize... 
uh, dumping your waste heat into a steam turbine or some way to get rid of the heat and then using that to run cooling networks, cooling, cooling liquid pipes, cooling gas pipes, whatever you want to do. Um, brief, brief uh, diversion. Thermoregulator versus thermoaquatuner. Thermoaquatuner is more power efficient, but you need to run it off conductive wires. Uh, the thermoregulator, uh, if you can fill a gas pipe with natural gas or hydrogen, it's not bad. Like, the power consumption isn't that high. You can run it off regular wires if need be, and you can you can send a gas pipe around to cool some farms, and it will do. Uh, it's obviously not as efficient as the thermoaquatuner, but it is easy to set up in the early game. Uh, so that's something I recommend as well. Thermoregulators are very underrated. Uh, for Especially for starts like this. Um, and yeah, one, one more thing I'd say is you're not going to have access to frozen biomes or, or tundra biomes haha, uh, until you, until you uh, teleport over to the small asteroid. So you're not going to find these warts right away. So just be careful about that. Yeah, pretty interesting start. Um, I like the hot starts in that they encourage you to learn about cooling, and that's a skill that's going to carry through to all of your other playthroughs. So I highly recommend hot starts as like an interesting, difficult challenge. But uh, yeah. Also, make sure to keep your oxyferns and your water cool. Um, oxyferns are a bit more heat tolerant than mealwoods. It can go up to 40 degrees C again, I think. Um, but if your water goes above 40 C, you're going to run into problems. And that's relevant on the next map as well, which is Oasis. This is this is the hardest start according to the devs, and I'm inclined to agree with them. So you start in the forest biome, uh, but you're surrounded by these hot sand biomes uh, that are 70 degrees sand, and you're not insulated at all. You have a thin layer of granite around your forest biome, so it will overheat over time if you're not careful. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to... Um, Move your oxyferns to the bottom of the base, put your water at the bottom of the base, insulate both of them with insulated tiles right away, and then have those run and produce your oxygen for a while. Uh, you do start with a fair bit of water, but you do need to go out through the hot sand to find more water sources. Uh, you can find them in... all the other biomes are regular temperature. Um, you can find... Um, you can find marsh biomes, you can find ocean biomes. So there will be water sources, but you do need to dig out through the sand to get to them. And don't be afraid of scolding your dupes if needed. Like, you will you will need to get out of the sand at some point, and you, you, you will need to find... You won't necessarily be able to do that um, after you get Atmos suits. You may have to do that before you get Atmos suits. Um, so what you can do is you can pour some liquid on the sand to cool it down a little bit. Um, that's not going to work forever, but it's it's something you can do. I wouldn't recommend using your starting water on that because you're going to want to conserve that. Um, but yeah, if you find if you find salt water from a nearby ocean biome, you can use that to sort of make it easier. And also bear in mind, digging the tiles reduces their mass by fifty percent. So digging hot tiles effectively reduces their thermal energy by 50%. Or well, the thermal energy difference with your with your temperate uh, biome your, and your normal temperature dupes. So yeah. Yeah, be careful. Prioritize looking for water sources. And uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting as well because this map also has an irregular oil biome. Uh, so you will find oil wells all over the place. And obviously those will scold you too. So don't accidentally dig into an oil biome because that won't help the situation. Um, but again, you can combine this with the irregular oil, trapped oil world traits, generate huge amounts of oil wells. I think the largest number of oil wells someone has found on Spaced Out is 65. Uh, so you can get stupid amounts of oil if you know what you're doing. Um, very interesting potential start with that. Um, the space biome is cold. Digging straight up, if you can find, if you can make sure that you don't end up pouring hot sand in your base, you can just go straight up, guaranteed to find cold space rocks. You can bring those back to your base to help keep things cool. You can send a water pipe up there to, to sort of distribute temperature around to start. You can even just navigate through the cold space biome to get to other parts of the map. Um, the sand does go for quite a way, but 
if you could travel through the, the space biome, you can find colder biomes. There are the radioactive biomes as well. These are cold. These are new as part of the spaced out update. Um, again, not super high mass, but they are very cold. Uh, so there is stuff in there that can help you. Um, unlike in the classic mode. And uh, yeah, yeah, very interesting start. Uh, again, you'll teleport over to your radioactive swamp. Just fairly standard. Yeah, I highly recommend trying a run on this. It will really get you thinking about cooling early on and develop skills that will help you in all your future playthroughs. So that's all the classic asteroid types. Um, pretty interesting variety among them. Um, but you can almost always find a hatch left of your printing pot. I'm going to keep saying that. So then we have the spaced out clusters. So the initial three have a main asteroid and then two inners and the teleporter will be on the first inner so the Terrania I'm gonna I'm gonna blitz through these fairly quickly because these first three are fairly self-explanatory Terrania is very similar to Terra except it lacks the ocean oil and radioactive biomes instead of the oil biome you have a badlands biome and this biome is big enough that you can find uh, refined iron veins in it so you can still get refined metal pretty easily on your starting asteroid which is nice. Uh, you will lack the radioactive biomes completely, so no access to uranium, uh, and you will lack the ocean biome. Um, but if you teleport over to the oily swamp, that's where you'll find all of your oil, but there's no magma. The magma is replaced with a barren biome, so you'll find even more refined metal in that, um, but not, not any magma for heating up stuff. Uh, you'll find your forest biomes on the oily swamp as well. You'll find your swampy biomes with the polluted water, i.e. Your, your trees and your, your bog buckets, stuff that consumes polluted water, you'll find over here. Uh, you can find dimble reeds on the Terrania um, asteroid, so that's good. Uh, for reed fiber production, you can find the, the Drecos as well for reed fiber production. Yeah, pretty interesting. And then your second in it is the irradiated forest. So this is where you find all of your uranium and uh, you do have to land a rocket there to get access to that planet. And you'll also find this new biome type which is only in the spaced out clusters. It's the metallic biome. So this is full of large deposits of metal ore uh, and usually uh, metal volcanoes. There will usually be gold volcanoes specifically that appear as formations. And these are amazing, not only because gold is a, is a metal that uh, has high overheat temperature, high decor. Um, the gold volcanoes themselves, because gold has such a sp low specific heat capacity, even though the gold comes out really hot, it's very easy to cool the gold. Um, so it's very easy to get renewable refined metal from these things. And not only that, but they even spawn with refined gold tiles surrounding them. Um, so you will find refined gold next to these volcanoes, and that's guaranteed. So there's even more refined metal over here for taking, which which can be quite nice. Uh, so bear that in mind. You, uh, yeah, you have your star map. Um, so here in this case, you have your main asteroid. Uh, in this case, the teleporter goes over to this asteroid on the right. Um, it, it's, it's fairly random, but you'll usually start fairly close to your, your two inner asteroids. Uh, one of them will have a teleporter, one you'll have to land a rocket from. But it will always be within range of like a carbon dioxide rocket from one of the planets. And then you have your outers where you have all your other destinations like the, the regolith asteroid and the like the niobium asteroid. Stuff like that. And then you'll need to do rocket travel for all of these. But uh yes. You will be missing you will be missing the ocean stuff and the radioactive stuff and the metallic stuff if you don't do rocket travel. So that's what I would say about this stuff. And the asteroid is fairly big. There's there's a fairly decent amount of room. And you do have a normal space biome on your main asteroid, uh, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, moving on from that, we have the foliar asteroid. Uh, so this is the forest start. Um, again, even though there's no sandstone biomes here, you can find a hatch to the left of your printing pod. So you can still do hatches here. Uh, similarly to the Terrania asteroid, the oil biome has been replaced by a barren biome, so you can still get your refined iron from down there. Uh, you have tundra biomes, you don't have marsh biomes, you do have jungle biomes, 
So you will be able to get Dreco's for Reed Fiber. You'll teleport over to the Rusty Oil Asteroid where you'll find your Sandstone Biomes. There'll be a Sandstone Start. Plenty of Algae for Oxygen Generation. Uh, there's Ocean Biomes over here as well. It's obviously where you'll find all the Rust-related stuff. The only thing that I find really useful from Rust Biomes either is just deoxidizing all the Rust to give yourself loads of Iron Ore, which can be good. Or the Dash of Salt Vine, which is a plant that consumes Chlorine. I find that quite handy sometimes. If you're trying to deal with the Chlorine Biomes in areas, just plant a Dash of Salt Vine outside of it and you can just wander in eventually. And then your second in asteroid is the irradiated swampy place, uh, which is where you'll find all your swampy biomes with the plug slugs and depleted water. Uh, and you'll also find your radioactive biome and your metallic biome here as well. So quite similar overall, but you have the forest start. It's it's a fairly typical forest start. Like it doesn't have a regular oil. Um, it doesn't have a huge amount of tundra on it. It doesn't have overly hot biomes. Uh, so if you just want a normal forest run, it's a it's pretty interesting to consider and it'll feel a bit different than your normal classic style runs because there will be a bit more rocket travel in it. But I think I'm going to try a Folia run next, to be honest, because it's something I never even really considered until I made this video. But you, you do have some interesting differences from like uh, the normal classic options for forest starts. But then uh, let's move on to the uh, Quagmiris asteroid. So here you start in a swampy biome. So no hatches, no hatches at all on this asteroid, which is quite rare. Um, you can teleport over to your rusty oil asteroid where you teleport in, again into sandstone. So you can find your hatches there if you need them. Uh, you'll, you'll need to do all the normal swampy biome uh, management strategies here, leading the oxygen, plug slugs for power, etc. Again, you have your barren biome here instead of the uh, metallic biome. So you'll uh, find refined metal in there. You'll have your barren biome there instead of the oily biome. But uh, yeah, and then your final asteroid will be the irradiated marsh. So it'll be mostly forest, mostly marsh. Um, I don't know why. When I got this image uh, for this for this video, it had a it had a really weirdly generated bit here, and I'm not sure why the map generated like this. I've never seen it do that before. Uh, it won't usually look like this. It will usually be like more normal marshy biomes. Uh, but bear in mind, you can get some pretty weird generation on this irradiated marsh, if you're unlucky. Um, one thing to bear in mind as well is that the only plant on your starting asteroid that consumes polluted water is the bog buckets from the swampy biome. If you're setting up a plumb bathroom where you're feeding the excess polluted water into a plant, you'll need to do it with bog buckets and you'll need to make a bit more space than usual because they don't consume a lot of it. So yeah, keep that in mind. But again, you'll find your, your metallic... Uh, vol uh, volcanic biome over here as well. Um, yeah, pretty interesting start. Again, you'll start um, fairly close to your inner asteroids and you will teleport to one of them. So next up, let me move my camera again. Just give me a sec. Right, here we go. Right, so uh, the advanced map variants for Spaced Out are the moonlit clusters and the the gimmick here is that you have a set of five different asteroids they're all very small and you have different combinations of starting on some and having teleporters to others and you have five different combinations so i'll go through them one by one uh the metallic swampy start is where you start on an asteroid which is mostly just swampy biomes just metallic biomes just marsh biomes and then it's just a magma biome at the bottom so you're really missing a lot of crucial stuff here. Uh, there's no there's no sandstone uh, for hatches. Uh, you won't find a hatch next to your printing pod because it's a swampy start. Uh, you won't have the forest for your pips and your dirt management. You won't have uh, wastelands for your sweetles and grub grubs. Uh, you won't have tundra biomes for your weaswarts, jungle biomes for your uh, drecos, and you won't have oil. So you do really need to go between asteroids to get stuff to actually develop your colony. And one thing to note about these spaced out starts, especially especially for these um, moonlit clusters, is that you'll have relatively few geysers on them and they'll be relatively fixed. And what I mean by that is some geyser types won't spawn on certain asteroids. Like 
you're not guaranteed to find a water asteroid, uh, a water source on your flipped asteroid. You're not guaranteed to find a metal volcano anywhere other than the metallic swampy asteroid. Um, so, depending on which set of uh, planets you start with, uh, you you can find yourself really lacking something crucial like access to renewable refined metals or access to water. So it can be a case where if you don't travel between the planets, you will just run out of resources and, and die. So that's really worth considering. Uh, but the metallic swampy start is fairly straightforward uh, in that you do have plenty of oxygen generation from your polluted water and polluted dirt. And you teleport over to the frozen forest. The frozen forest is kind of like rhyme in that it has cold variants of the rust, jungle and forest biomes uh, on it. So it is colder than normal, uh, but you will find, you can find different geysers over there and that can help you. Um, in terms of your actual reed fiber production, you're probably going to be doing it from thimble reeds from the marsh biome on your starting planet. And in terms of metal production, you will have metal volcanoes on this asteroid. So you'll have access to renewable refined metals to start. Uh, but you won't find any digging up immediately. Apart from apart from the little bits of gold you can find by the gold volcano. So definitely prioritize finding that gold volcano. Um, and you can use that to make some conductive wires to start without having to build a without having to refine metals quite that early if you want. And then uh, yeah. I'll talk more about the other asteroids as we go through the different starts, because otherwise I'll be repeating myself a lot. But bear in mind that even yeah, even between the frozen forest and the metallic swampy, you're lacking the sandstone biome, you're lacking the ocean biome, you're lacking the wasteland biome, tundra bar uh, barren biomes as well. You'll need to go. You'll need to travel via rockets to find oil at all, because you can only find oil on the Desertlands asteroid. And obviously, the radioactive biome is only found in the radioactive ocean asteroid. So rocket travel is a must on the moonlets thing for a complete colony. So if we move on from that, so the next, yeah, the next, the next uh, one on the list for uh, the game is Desertland Start. So you start in Sandstone Biome. It's basically a mini Badlands start. You start in Sandstone. There is some tundra. There's some jungle. Uh, there's some oily biome. Uh, there's some barren biome as well. The barren biomes that can spawn on these moonlets are quite small. And they're not guaranteed to have large refined iron veins in them. So be careful. It is often just blocks of rock. Uh, so it can be a bit more of a detriment than on a normal Badlands star. Um, and then you teleport over to the radioactive ocean, uh, which will have water sources on it. Um, you do have the forest biome here and the ocean biome. Uh, not a lot in the way of sort of metallic resources and somewhat challenging to get oxygen at the start because of the forest area here where you need to get the oxyferns going but you will have water here that you can electrolyze so it's not too bad uh, you will have some metal that you can access um, in the barren biomes and you will have access to lead in the oil biome as well so that's pretty helpful in a starting situation um, pretty fun um, I've, I've done this as well I like it a lot and then the next condition is the frozen forest. So you start on the colder asteroid. You have a forest start. It is cold. Uh, so that can be challenging. You do need to heat up areas to grow plants. You need to make sure that your oxyferns aren't going to get too cold. And then you can teleport over to the desert lands and get your refined metal there. Get your oil there. Um, you also have the rust biome uh, as a cold variant on the frozen forest, so you can grab the rust related stuff, get some metal ore going that way with the rust deoxidizers. That's pretty viable as a starting option. That generates a fair amount of heat as well, so that can help heat up your areas. Definitely, I would say um, the frozen forest is probably the best case where you want to make use of the rust deoxidizer. It could be a bit niche compared to the other oxygen options, but it, it really is a strong option on this. On this asteroid specifically and also because you have the forest biome and the rust biome nearby you have a lot of stuff related to ethanol production like arbor trees and nosh sprouts so you can consider running a base off of ethanol and using that to leverage a start out of this but uh 
yeah, slightly more challenging than the others because of the initial challenges with oxygen production. Once you get to the desert lands, you can use the algae there to get some oxygen and that can help. Uh, but yeah, somewhat middle of the road in terms of challenge. And then we move on to the, the really challenging options. So the flipped asteroid. So unlike the other magma asteroids, this one has the magma on top. And there is a little column that you can dig through to get access to the surface, but that's still going to be somewhat challenging because it's still hot obsidian and sand. You do need to be careful. You start a sandstone biome, so you do have good initial oxygen production options. You can get hatches going. And you also find your frozen tundra biomes here. So you do have access to wheeze warts with radiation. But um, the main thing that's concerning is you're not guaranteed a water source here. Um, sometimes you'll find a cool steam vent, sometimes you'll find a steam vent, sometimes you'll find nothing. Uh, so you may need to melt your tundra biomes for water at the start. You do have some available, but if you have a lot of dupes, you may need to melt your tundra biomes. Then you'll teleport over to the desert lands, which is again sandstone, which can be pretty good. Um, you can find your Drecos here. Another thing that makes this flipped start harder than all the other starts I've talked about so far is just the limited options for reed fiber. You don't have a marsh biome, you don't have a marsh biome or a jungle biome on your flipped asteroid. You'll have to go to the desert lands for Drecos to get your reed fiber. Uh, so it can be quite challenging. One thing to bear in mind as well with the flipped asteroid is you're guaranteed to find a liquid sulfur geyser in the magma biome. And what I would recommend doing with that is you can tunnel out, go through the surface, go along the surface, tunnel back down into the magma and then pump the sulfur out through the vacuum of space back into your base. <laughs> Avoid digging through the magma. You don't want to let the magma into your, into your asteroid to cook it. You don't really have the space to avoid it. Um, but you do want to take advantage of that sulfur. You do have access to wasteland biomes, extensive wasteland biomes on your flipped asteroid. You can feed that sulfur to sweetles and grub grubs, and you can get dirt and water that way. So this asteroid is a really good example of where the sulfur geyser can be crucial to your success, because you will be guaranteed one. Um, but yeah, very interesting start. And you do need rocket travel to get access to the forest biomes, the swampy biomes, ocean, marsh, rust, radioactive, and metallic. So a lot of rocket travel is really needed. I'm doing a flipped uh, a flipped biome, a flipped asteroid run at the moment, and I'm finding it very challenging. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. And then the final start, which I think is actually the hardest, maybe, is the radioactive ocean stuff. So the only biomes on the radioactive ocean are the forest and the ocean and the radioactive. <laughs> Not a lot of metal sources at all. Um, you do need to generate your initial oxygen through oxyferns, uh, which is more challenging than normal as well. Uh, you have vast quantities of salt water that aren't really that useful. You'll need to desalinate that to electrolyze that or feed it to oxyferns. Um, not really a lot of super helpful stuff here. And your teleporter asteroid is the flipped asteroid. So again, somewhat less useful options here. And the one thing I would say is that you're not going to find either a marsh biome or a jungle biome on either of these asteroids. So you aren't going to have reed fiber for when you're making your rockets. So you're going to have to land on at least one asteroid without exosuits. So you do need to prepare your space travel in advance. You do need to send a rover to dig a forward base so that your dupe can land on the asteroid and immediately retreat into an oxygenated area. Very dangerous uh, space travel without exosuits, but something you have to do on the radioactive ocean start. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. You are at least guaranteed water sources, so oxygen production is not too bad, but metal production is something you'll struggle with because uh, you won't find metal volcanoes on either of these two asteroids. Uh, you will need to rocket travel for that as well. Uh, if you're not careful, you can run out of refined metal. So be careful about that as well. And uh, yeah, that sums up all the different uh, types of spaced out starts. So now I'm just going to head over to the summary where we combine all of these tables together and I show you the uh, end result. So I'll just hover on these slides for a little bit. But uh, yeah, so these are all the classic asteroid distributions. You can see a lot of the uh, classic asteroid types, you start in a sandstone biome, 
Um, the only the only classic asteroid where you actually have a sandstone biome on your starting asteroid um, that you don't start in is a squelching asteroid, which I find quite interesting. Um, and then you have your forest biomes, which are also are the forest starts, which are also quite common. And then you only have one asteroid where you start in a swampy biome. I wonder whether they're going to add more swampy biome starts, because I feel like there's potential that they could do with that. Um, other than that, you'll always find a jungle biome on your starting classic asteroid. So you'll always have access to Dracos, you'll always have access to oil. Um, most of the time you'll have access to Tundra, but some asteroids you will need to teleport for it. Uh, for Weez Warts, like for the Vedante asteroid, Radio, Oasis. And then generally, yeah, these classic asteroids correspond to either the radioactive swamp second planet or the radioactive terror second planet. These three uh, secondary asteroids are quite niche and you won't bump into them unless you play their respective maps, but definitely give Rhyme a go. Rhyme is really fun. Yeah, I like the classic asteroids a lot. So then after that, we have the spaced out asteroids. So I've separated them a little bit differently here. Um, I'm covering up the title, but there wasn't any room for me to do that. Um, here, I've colored them according to the, the types of tertiary asteroids you're going to get as well. So your Terranio, your, your Folio, and your Quagmire are all slightly different. You're always going to find wasteland biomes on these three starts. So you'll always have access to sweet little grub grubs, i.e. The new, the new spaced out critters. You'll always have jungles for immediate access to Drekos, uh, and you'll always have immediate access to Weezwarts. So quite a lot of tools for getting started with. Uh, not very often you'll have access to the marsh biome, but the teleporter is very shortly uh, the teleporter is very shortly away. But interestingly enough, the teleport the second asteroids with the teleporters on them will never have marsh biomes on them. So you often you you won't usually be running into thimble reed until until you uh, get your rocket travel going, unless you started on Terrania. You'll always find your rust biomes on these second asteroids, and you'll always find your oil biomes on these asteroids, um, which is interesting. And then your tertiary asteroids, um, you're always going to find your tundra asteroids there for your your three asteroid starts. You're always going to find your radioactive and metallic biomes there. And then the moonlets are just doing their own little thing <laughs> where they're uh, completely weird, and it's, it's bonkers, and there's just so much rocket travel. But it's a lot of fun. Um, definitely would recommend um, I mean overall my recommendation is just try different starts it gets you thinking about the game really differently and it really expands your sort of creativity and how you build bases how you how you think about what your dupes are needing to do to survive um, it's just it's just it just really expands on the game trying out each of the different starts and uh, yeah definitely mix up with world traits as well I'm gonna make a video about world traits soon <laughs> Um, they're very interesting, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on these uh, these uh, slides at the end. Uh, I usually stream oxygen not included on Twitch, uh, 7:30 to 10:30 GMT. It's daylight savings at the moment, but usually stick to those sorts of hours. I upload all the vods to YouTube where you are now, and uh, uh, we're currently doing a flipped asteroid run, uh, so that's quite a lot of fun. And uh, we have a Discord where we hang out and we post oxygen not included related memes, uh, builds, discussions about things. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid place to hang out. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys all watching uh, these YouTube videos. Um, I like I like making them. I like sharing my knowledge with the game. I'm by no means a perfect player. And to be honest, I do some things uh, deliberately wrong just because I find it funny. <laughs> So I'm not always the perfect role model, but I do enjoy this game a lot, and it's nice being able to share it with all you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to another, another nice year of that. Uh, so with that, I'll leave you with just a slide, and I'll uh, I'll see you, I'll see you soon. Hopefully, see you on Twitch. Bye for now.